Okay, so uh, you've been in the army, you've taken part in a yacht race around the world, you've climbed Everest. What do you think the particular challenges of this expedition are going to be? Oh, David, great question. Um, listen, uh, all of these trips always um, bring forth some kind of a challenge, um, always, always slightly different. It's obviously a very dangerous part of the world. It's the remotest, coldest, windiest continent in the world. Um, and so to go and have to operate effectively in those kind of arenas is very good for you. You have to learn a new language, average temperature of minus 35, and go down to minus 60. Uh, on this particular trip, my role is slightly different uh, because I am taking three wounded soldiers. I used to be a soldier. And I'm taking three soldiers, and so my real task is to make sure that we get to the South Pole and we're safe and no one gets hurt. Uh, so I'm taking that quite seriously. Uh, it's a lovely story, a very evocative story. My old regiment that these three young lads come from um, was the regiment that the chap called Lawrence Oates, who was also in the regiment, uh, was from, and, and he was the guy who very famously, a hundred years ago, uh, left a tent with uh, four other people, Captain Scott being one of them, uh, and did a very he heroic thing and self-sacrificed himself by saying, I'm just going outside and there might be some time. And he basically walked to his death because he thought he was holding up the others. Sadly, all four of them subsequently died ten days later, but it was a very brave thing. So from our perspective, it's a very, it's a very emotive, it's a very historical story, and we're all very proud to be doing it, so yeah, it's great. Wow. So, um, how have you prepared for this expedition in particular? Well, usual way. I've had my highlights done, my nails done, <laughs> and a good waxing. Um, uh, you, you basically have to spend a bit of time just getting quite strong. Um, we're completely unsupported, so we're dragging everything, and uh, so you need to be fit, really, and quite robust. I've been fortunate enough, because I've done a lot of this stuff, that I kind of know, you know, the threshold, so I always try and keep myself uh, pretty, pretty uh, fit, really. And you have to do a lot of dragging tyres. Uh, we spend a bit of time in Norway and also in the Alps training because uh, we're skiing. So, yeah, I mean, you just sort of got to take it quite seriously and obviously planning and preparation is a very big aspect of what you do. So, um, yeah, we've sort of done that, hopefully. So you're feeling ready? Yeah, I think so. A bit exhausted, lots on, obviously, I'm, but it's not my day job. I mean, this is my day job running, yeah. running my <laughs> business. So I've got quite a lot, at the, a lot on at the moment. But, I mean, the, it's a real delight. You know, we're about to go away for over four weeks uh, to a very, very special part of the world. And... Oddly, there's no distractions, there's no phones, there's no computers. There's, you, you become very, very simple and you get back to some pretty core aspects of living life and very good interaction. With, we're a very strong team, there's ten of us. and um, So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Very, I feel very privileged and very proud, actually. And how did you come to be involved with this project in, in, in the first place? Um, well... Basically, uh, because of the historic link that there is with my old regiment, it's been on my mind to do this mm -hmm. for a long time. And a very good chum of mine is a chap called David Henderson Evans, who's a very, very famous explorer. And I have been very lucky to have done a couple of trips with David. I've been helped him take his 15-year-old daughter to the North Pole when she became the youngest British girl to ski there. And we've also stood on top of Everest together, so we know each other quite well. And he knew I wanted to do this, so we started scheming and putting together a team of people. Uh, it's very expensive to do these. I mean, the biggest barrier to entry is, obviously, it's an expensive place to get to. We started looking at raising the money, and we've got a great team. Um, you know, we've got uh, another chum of ours called Michael Walker, who owns Iceland Supermarkets, being very, very uh, supportive as one of our uh, benefactors. Uh, and, yeah, great team. Really great team. In fact, all along, as I said, I've done lots of these trips. This one's just worked, and, and everyone's pulled their weight. Lots of uh, very helpful hands and bright minds have got behind it. So it's been fantastic to be uh, sort of helping steer it. Cool. And would you tell me a little bit about the charities involved? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're working for two charities, and one of them is called Walking with the Wounded, which is a, a fantastic charity set up by two mates of mine, by Charles. And what they 
do is they help reintroduce soldiers who have been injured in conflict back into the work environment. Um, and obviously there's quite a lot of, lot of conflict on at the moment, so it's quite a topical thing. And they're fantastic, really, really wonderful organisation. Uh, the other one is Alzheimer's Research UK, again, which is a fantastic charity, and they are involved with working on finding a cure and prevention for dementia. So I think they're both uh, very evocative and powerful, and uh, as I said before, we're very proud to be assisting where we can. And what is it that motivates you to keep pushing yourself to do, do these extreme expeditions? Oh, David, uh, <laughs> vanity. Uh, <laughs> I am fascinated, and always have been since I was a very young boy really, with um, challenging myself, pushing myself and seeing what you can do, um, both physically and mentally. And um, I, I still have that real hunger, I mean I'm approaching 50 now, and uh, I've been lucky enough to go to all the corners of the world really, and I love that, I really do, I always come back and learn something. I especially love the planning aspect of it. The individuals that you go with, you learn an awful lot, always about yourself. This one in particular will be amazing, taking these three wounded soldiers. I just think that there's an enormous amount that one can learn. I call it expeditionary learning, and I think it's something which is, is very powerful. And I think um, it, we all come back better and bigger people. So I hope that we can, I can keep doing it, actually. And I'm, I'm thrilled when the, the message gets out there and people start seeing how, how beneficial it is for all parties. Um, when you're on one of these expeditions, what is the sort of daily routine? Well, um, the Antarctic one will be an interesting one. It's obviously very driven by weather there. Uh, the weather can, if it kicks off, can be really very, very hostile. So you have to be very respectful of that. But ultimately what you want to do is you start very early in the morning. It's 24 hours of uh, sunlight at the moment so there's no night time. Uh, so you'll get up and... How does that affect you? It's quite weird, actually. It's a quite a weird... I've done it. I've done a tri similar trip, uh, what it's been like. You're quite knackered at the end of the day, because days are quite long. Obviously, the gear's very, very cold. Uh, so it just your body keeping... You, you burn a lot of energy, and obviously then you're trying to cover quite a lot of, of distance, dragging all your kit. So you tend to, once you get on to the right, a time zone, you stay on that time zone, you, the body's very adaptive. It quite quickly gets back on to when you should sleep and when you should get up. But we will try and get up quite early, weather, uh, you know, obviously permitting, and you melt water, it's the first thing you do. You then have some breakfast. Everything is freeze-dried, all the food. And then from there, you will pack up the inside of the tent, pack up the outside of the tent, all very, very quickly, because it's, it's extraordinarily cold. And then off you go. And uh, throughout the day, you don't stop. You stop every hour and a half for about three or four minutes, maximum, probably three minutes. And you have a quick uh, slurp of tea out of your flask. You have these munchy bags, so you're just sort of eating all day from nuts and mm -hmm. chocolate and stuff. You need to try and have between five and 7,000 calories. Whoa. <laughs> uh, and then at the end of the day, you find a suitable place and you set up the camp. Uh, you start melting water again, then you eat something, and then you sleep, if you can, it's chilly inside the tent. Uh, and then next day you start the same thing again, and that's what we will do. I'm sure we'll hit some, some bad weather. If you do hit bad weather, obviously everything changes, and you can't, can't do anything if, if the temperature goes down or if it's too windy. So then you are tent bound, and hopefully we won't have too many of those days because we've got quite a lot of distance to do. And so um, it's great. And what's fantastic about this is we are, with the trip is called In the Footsteps of Legends, we are, you know, we're walking in the footsteps of the great Shackleton and Scott and Oates and, you know, yep. all the rest. So it's really, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be absolutely amazing. How do you expect you'll be feeling at the end of the three weeks? Well, God willing, if everything goes well, uh, we'll be ecstatic. You know, this is a, again, it's very nice territory that we're in now because we're starting to raise huge sums of money. I mean, we've already on this trip raised over £850,000. We haven't even started. Uh, the Sunday Times are our media sponsor, but more importantly, they are, we're their Christmas appeal, uh, charitable appeal. So 
with a fair win, we could really raise a huge amount of money. And that is a wonderful feeling. It really is. And so I think, again, we're all very pumped up and, and motivated to make sure that we are successful.